It's been a beautiful day in Simpsonville, South Carolina, and uh, we're continuing to look at some questions that my church members asked when we gave them the opportunity to ask anonymously some questions. And tonight we're going to take a look at a question that someone asked. Salvation, sanctification, spiritual growth or maturity, lordship, what do these words mean and how do they differ? Salvation, sanctification, spiritual maturity or lordship, and how do they differ? Well, first let me tell you my story for the evening. A father took his daughter to a ballet uh, because he was trying to get her involved in going to ballet lessons. And he explained to her that uh, he thought it would help with her poise and uh, her exercise and so on. And she said, well, I don't know what ballet is. And he said, well, I'll take you to a ballet. So he took her to a ballet. And uh, there she watched for a few minutes and he watched for a few minutes. And then he turned to her and said, now that's ballet. And she watched for a little bit longer. And then she said to her father, she said, why are they up on their toes? And he said, that's what ballet is all about, dancing on your toes. So she watched for a few minutes longer and then she turned to her father and she said, why don't they just get taller dancers? <laughs> well, tonight we want to take a look at salvation. Found more than 245 times, uh, 100 times in the New Testament. Uh, saved or salvation can be physical, temporal salvation, or it can be spiritual salvation. So you've got to be very careful uh, to see exactly whether it's talking about physical or spiritual salvation or being saved. Understanding spiritual salvation means to understand the gospel, to repent, that is to turn away from your sin, and to accept Jesus as having died for your sins. I think it's best expressed in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. If we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. That's the same thing as turning away from sin. And with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. So it's a threefold thing. You first got to understand it. Second, you got to believe it down in your heart, which is going to change the way that you're going at 180 degrees and when you have actually confessed it and believing it, uh, then it results in salvation. Sanctification, uh, found over 62 times in the Old Testament, 34 in the New Testament, or some variation of sanctify, uh, means a step or a process. Uh, for example, the very definition of the word sanctify means to set aside. That's an individual step. I can set something aside. It's one step. And when we're saved, we are sanctified. We're set aside for eternal life. However, sanctification also is a process. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not saved and that we have to go through a process to be saved. Uh, but it does mean that we can become more in the process is being purified. Uh, let me just give you a couple of verses here. John 17:17, 17, 17, Jesus was praying the priestly prayer for us, for you and for me. And he said, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. The more you study God's word, the more you're obedient to God's word, the more sanctification comes into your life. And in Romans, in the second part of chapter 6, verse 19, the second part of the verse says, uh, So now present your members as slaves to righteousness, resulting in sanctification. When we take all that we are and we present them as slaves to righteousness, that is right living, obedience to God, it results in a sanctification process. We're becoming uh, like Jesus. 
uh, the fellow that got up and gave testimony in the church service and says, uh, I, uh, not what I ought to be. I'm not what I'm going to be, but I'm sure not what I was. You see, he saw that sanctification process. He saw that he wasn't what he used to be. And he saw that he wasn't yet what he should be. But he was going to continue to work towards becoming what God called him to be. So we have sanctification as a step, which is salvation. We see sanctification as a process, becoming more like Christ. The third term was spiritual maturity or lordship. Uh, first thing that you can see is in 1 Corinthians 3, 1, uh, as Paul writes, he says, I could not speak to you as spiritual men, but as men of flesh, as to infants or babes. Uh, these men might have known the Lord Jesus as their Savior, uh, but they were still spiritually very weak, not mature. There were still fightings and quarrels amongst them because they had not yet spiritually matured. Another verse that I'd like to give you is Philippians 2.12. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, that's not work for your salvation with fear and trembling. That's work in the garden of your salvation to become spiritually mature or to understand lordship. Uh, when we see Mark chapter 9, verse 24, uh, the boy that was sick and the father who was beseeching Jesus, and Jesus asked him, do you believe? The father said, I do believe. Help my unbelief. You see, we are maturing, we're growing. Lordship then and the spiritual maturity probably is best demonstrated in Luke chapter 1 verse 38 with Mary, the one that would become the mother, the biological mother of the body of Jesus. Mary had just been told by the angel that she was going to have a child out of wedlock without a human father. And she didn't understand it completely. I mean, she asked questions. She said, how can this be? You know, I'm a virgin. I've never been with a man. And after Gabriel explained it to her, here's what she said, which exemplifies lordship. Mary said, behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I don't understand it. I'm not sure I like it. But I yield all that I am to the Lord Jesus. Now, that's an interesting way of speaking about lordship. When we surrender all, when we yield to him completely, we're starting to understand the word lordship. So there you have it. Salvation, a step. Believing, understanding, repenting, accepting. Sanctification, a process that goes on after we've been saved so that we become more like Jesus. We're being purified and becoming more like him. Spiritual maturity and lordship, when we finally reach that point, when we yield all that we are to him, doesn't mean we'll be perfect, but when we're willing to yield all that we are to him, we understand spiritual maturity and lordship. Your thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.